Well, a few weeks ago, I drank an Imperial Pumpkin Ale, and it was pretty good. And I mentioned in that that I was hoping to find Hopworks Great Gourds of Fire. And then I visited Trader Joe's, and it was there. Welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. Today I will be drinking, re-drinking, again, second year in a row, third year in a row, I think third year in a row, uh, Great Gourds of Fire by Hopworks Brewing. They used to be called Hopworks Urban Brewing, um, and I believe they renamed to just Hopworks Brewery uh, a year or so ago. This is out of the Portland area. And what I particularly liked about this beer was the fact that they specifically fire roast their gourds before they include them in the beer making process. And I felt that added just a little extra something something that made this a particularly special beer. I have been able to find this pretty much every year since I discovered it at Trader Joe's in the Olympia area. Mmm, to the nose there's like pumpkin bread, nice spiced pumpkin bread. A little bit of the minerality that I've detected in other pumpkin beers. I didn't get it all over my mustache. Hmm. Yeah, it's so it's it's pretty much pumpkin bread. So mildly sweet pumpkin aromas with a nice spice to it. Uh, cloves, nutmeg, not really cinnamon, I don't think, but you're dealing with those winter spices, right? Allspice, cloves, nutmeg, cinnamon, that sort of thing. Together with that nice, um, uh, sweet pumpkin bread. So it's kind of a sweetness, kind of a maltiness, and kind of a pumpkininess. And then it is something I notice is common to pumpkin beers. It is this, this mineral character. And I wonder if in order to brew pumpkin beer, a particular pH is optimal for the water that's included. And maybe that is what produces this, this minerality. Um, I'm not sure. It's just interesting that of the various pumpkin beers that I recall, a lot of them have this kind of... Uh, dry or crisp mineral character to them that even go so far as to be detectable to the nose as well. Hmm. Yeah, well, let's see how it tastes. Yeah, this is still the king of the pumpkin beers, in my opinion. Uh, what you smelled is what you taste with the addition of a really nice earthy hop finish that really just tells you, hey, go back in for more because it's going to be awesome still, right? So you get this nice, sweet pumpkin bread aroma or uh, taste now that I'm drinking it, taste to begin with. So you're dealing with this nice gourd pumpkin, slightly sweet, slightly bready, malty, this spiced character clove, cinnamon, nutmeg, um, that sort of thing. And then also there's a depth to it. Like it's, it's just intensified a bit. You know, when you roast something, typically it, it intensifies the, the Maillard reactions, the caramelization, the, the browning intensifies, brings maybe a hint of smokiness. There's, though there isn't smokiness per se in here. It's just, there's a depth to it without being burned. And then it feels like that deepens and darkens as the hops come to play because they used a nice earthy, dark hop to this. There's a bit of a West Coast bitterness to it as well. Um, if someone isn't a fan of hops at all, they might find this finish a bit too bitter. But there's this really nice like uh, progression. You go from this sweet, full, spiced, 
pumpkin beginning and middle. And then it starts to transition and it feels like the roastiness is becoming more of a thing. And then eventually you realize, no, that's just this really nice hop finish. And it's, it, it continues through very nicely. It's a really nice transition. And you do have that mineral, that kind of mineral character that comes in uh, later on as the hops are starting to build. And it serves as kind of a transition point, I think, between the, the, the pumpkin bread, spice, and roasty, and then into the hop. Why I like this. It has the sweetness that you would expect in an imperial without imperial levels of weight or booziness. You get that sweet character of a pumpkin bread. You get a really nice pumpkin spice. So it's both pumpkin and the spice. It's all in there. And you get this, it, and then the really nice hop finish. It's, it's just a really, it's a really good beer. And particularly if you're a fan of West Coast style IPAs or hoppier beers in general, um, this has a high chance of being one of your favorite pumpkin beers too. If pumpkin beers are your thing, which they should be this time of year. Because of the hoppiness, I'm not sure that I would cook with this. Though I suppose with a bread, like inclusion in a brown bread, a beer bread, it might actually be pretty good. But generally, increased hoppiness tends to produce more off-bitter flavors when you intensify the heat, when you use it in cooking process. So if I were trying to cook or make a... You know, like a pumpkin beer kind of stew or something, or use a pumpkin beer in a stew. I wouldn't choose one that was hopped quite so strongly as this. But as far as like pairing with food, that same hoppiness, I think, works really well to make this a good option for pairing with a lot of foods, especially richer foods. Typically, a pumpkin beer is going to be to the rich and heavy and sweet side. And so it's not going to work very well with a rich, heavy, sweet food or a strong food, you know, burger or something like that. But the hoppiness in this really gives you some counterbalance, some some alternative to the to the palate that that works really nicely and would then allow it to serve, you know, alongside a burger. If you drink pumpkin <laughs> pumpkin beers with your burgers. <laughs> yeah, it's a good beer. It still is a good beer. I still like it. And it still is probably my overall favorite pumpkin beer. And I'll leave it at that, because what more is there to say? Anyways, this is me, Matthew. I have been drinking and enjoying Hopworks Breweries, Great Gourds of Fire. And I'll catch y'all on the flip side.